There are so many studies that are released each day, but we can't always trust them. One day, salt's bad. The next day, salt's the best thing in the world for you. Anyway, that's why we consult the experts right here, like Dr. Rosie Shohan, and she joins us right now. Dr. Shohan, welcome back to America Trends. Good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Now, the first study that I saw floating around today on the internet was about the effect that stressed out wives have on the health of their husbands, health of their husbands. Um, what did these researchers find? They found that uh, wives who are stressed out raise the blood pressure of their husbands. Um, it wasn't necessarily the converse situation. Um, and, you know, it, it, the study was done in the older population, so they were playing the traditional roles. And essentially, as men get older, they rely on the fact that the, that the wife is going to be supporting them and prolong their health as well. Um, now, the study uh, may not reflect more on the, gender, uh, the younger population now, and those kind of gender roles may be different, but that was what was shown. Interesting, because uh, that whole, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy thing, that gets said a lot at my house. So I'm kind of thinking that that might be true. <laughs> Another study, Dr. Rosie said that a, a lot of people, uh, or that some people who get tattoos are finding that they're having allergies, itching, blistering. We had a massive debate on my Facebook page just today about oh. the, the safety and health of tattoos. I'm curious what your take was on that study. Well, the study showed that about um, 80 million uh, U.S. citizens have tattoos, actually, which is a, a you know, there's a big number of people, and uh, essentially showed that some um, percentage of the population of these tattoo patient, uh, people who have tattoos uh, have long-lasting issues beyond four months, such as pain, itching, and swelling. And uh, the actual number was about 4.8 million people have prolonged issues. Now, uh, most of the people had a uh, red dye, and that that was thought uh, to be the culprit in terms of causing long-term issues. Yeah, I have to say, when I saw that there was some health concern with tattoos, I immediately thought, oh no, especially when I read the red dye part, because my husband has a tattoo, and right across the middle of it is a red stripe, and I thought, oh, what's the issue? Um, but it was, it was itching, uh, I think scaly skin or something gross like that, and it yes. wasn't anything that sounded too life-threatening, I guess I'd say. So, I you, mean, you, uh, yeah, go you ahead. You do have to be careful, sorry. You do have to be careful, just an aside to this study, just from my personal clinical experience, you do have to be careful where tattoos are done. I mean, you know, hepatitis B can be transferred and hepatitis C can be transferred in this way. And this study did not cover that. They were more talking about the allergic response to the different dyes in the tattoo. But uh, just want to point that out from a medical standpoint. Yeah, I do hear that. But I always think, you know, you can get some of those things going to lunch at the wrong place too. So you always have to be careful where you're going. Now there was a study um, about how much alcohol was healthy for your heart. How much can we drink per day and still be healthy? Because, you know, really, one week you hear you're supposed to have a glass or two of wine every night, and now this study said something about more than a drink a day being unhealthy, in fact, toxic for women, especially women's hearts, right? Right. I mean, this study did uh, conclude that two drinks a day uh, and no more was advisable for men and that women shouldn't uh, uh, have more than one drink a day. Now, um, this study was done also in uh, elderly people, and who knows, maybe their drinking of alcohol prolonged their life to the 70-something age, which was sort of the uh, average age of these people that were investigated. Um, and they also did echocardiograms, which showed the very early signs of alcoholic um, cardiomyopathy, which is slight enlargement in the, um, the, the ventricles of the heart. But um, it, Generally, that is the guideline. I mean, on the other hand, many studies have shown that our, uh, a certain degree of alcohol intake protects us on a cardiovascular level, so prevents heart attacks, strokes, and things like that. So there is a sweet spot in terms of alcohol intake. All right, another study, Dr. Shohan, found that Hawaii has the lowest obesity rate. Is it all that spam we're eating? Should I be buying spam? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the really, I mean, it may be that uh, people become more educated. Either they're getting better or we're getting worse here on the mainland. Um, it's outdoor lifestyle, healthier, um, healthier uh, diet. Um, of note, Mississippi was thought to be the worst 
at uh, the national average was 28% and Hawaii was 19 and Mississippi was uh, 35. So there may be kind of educational aspects to this, available, availability uh, and financial aspects of buying good food as well. So there's lots of uh, aspects to this and it's kind of unclear what the components could be. It would be interesting, you make a great point to see it mapped um, as to the weather. How many months of the year can you spend outside in that particular state? Because I would think California would be a pretty healthy state too. Another study found that mental illness is a bigger problem for the p poor. Um, but what is the cause here? Does poverty cause mental illness or does mental illness cause poverty? I think that would be a great chicken and egg question to explore. Yes, you're absolutely uh, on the spot there uh, with, I mean, mental health disease uh, can cause a downward spiral in existence. And it's true, sometimes it's hard to uh, define whether, which, which way it's going, you know, whether it's uh, mental health causing poverty or whether it's poverty causing mental health. And I think the answer is both. Both are true. Um, I think that even any physical illness, would, you know, if you were unable to work because of a physical illness, of course you would earn less, but mental, mental health is really hard. It's a very difficult situation, and I think the both comments that you've, statements you've made are true. All right, then there was women in cities who were asked about harassment from men on the streets. 72% of women said they took different transportation due to harassment or cat calls for men. I know there are certain quick shops I won't stop at for precisely that reason. 85% also said they were harassed on the street for the first time before the age of 17. Uh, those numbers seem so high, but I have to ask this question too. One, what is harassment? Because someone doing a cat call, I'm just not damaged by that. Now when it comes to you know any sort of touching or even on the subway where people want to stand a little close, that can be invasive, those kinds of things. So what kind of harassment was, uh, was quantified here? Well, I mean, it wasn't just cat calls that we're talking about, groping, touching, and all the things that you kind of uh, list. So it wasn't just a, a distant uh, call or making comments. It was actually a physical interaction uh, with the woman. And um, it's true, they may, the study actually looked at the U.S. versus some other countries as well. So there may be some cultural elements uh, overall, but, but generally no one liked it. No women actually said that they, they thought it was acceptable. Um, and it's true that, that it started in some cases very, very young. So, and it's scary. And ultimately, I think many men don't realize that even if they don't mean any harm, that it's scary uh, for the woman, it's threatening. Um, ultimately, a woman is always aware of her safety. Absolutely. All right, one last question I have for you. We have to be quick here, but a study was done on what men like about him, about women. <clears throat> and the studies, study was, <laughs> I'm having a little trouble putting this together, what do men prefer, women with brains or a big bust size? I thought this answer was very interesting. Quickly, if you can. Well, uh, basically the study concluded that men like brains over bust. And uh, they also commented that men liked uh, symmetry of the physical aspects of a woman. And uh, essentially it was underpinned by the fact that men are thought to choose women on the basis of whether they could make a good mother and maybe make an assessment on how educated or, or good her upbringing is. So and we go back to that base, you know, who do you want to have children with question that actually motivates men. I'm fascinated by that. I'm not so sure about it, but I'm fascinated. Dr. Rosie Shohan, you're awesome. Thanks for being with us today. We appreciate you.